Hey guys, I'm getting started with this Ultra 96 and I wanted to bring you along with me on the install of the MPSOC and stuff, kind of the first steps moving into this thing. Um, and I'm going to do this as I go. I've never worked with this board before. Um, not a ton of experience, but I've got experience with this sort of thing. Um, so I figured I'd take you along as I go. Maybe you learn how I learn uh, and maybe you'll learn the way to get through all this. So let's get started. <music> So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I've got this web page open and I will put the link down below. So on this page, um, I went down to tutorial one, I'm skipping the video processing thing, uh, TRD package. Um, what we want to do is just uh, build a ZU and a multi-processor system on a chip here. So I downloaded this file and if I back out of here and look at the, the file, um, kind of go through all the, the normal stuff and prerequisites, uh, the objectives of this. Uh, and we get down to here. Um, they used Windows 7. I'm pretty sure we can use Linux for this. Um, so I went to this GitHub here and that would be another page on here. And uh, what I did was just download and clone the whole thing. Uh, so you wanna do, I mean, you could go through and pull the, the exact package that you want, but these files aren't that big. Um, and you could go, you know, go into this link if it ever gets there and download all these guys here. Oh, by the way, you're gonna need a password when you go into here. So you're gonna make an account with Ultra 96. Um, no big deal. Uh, so you could go through and download all these guys. Um, what I just did was to download the entire thing, clone or download the whole thing. So now that we have our uh, BDF master.zip file, what I wanna do is get that file into the directory that the file told us we needed to be in. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and unzip the thing. Um, what I'm going to do is extract this whole thing to my downloads folder here um, and we'll just hit that button, show the files. Now it's all under BDF master file in the downloads folder, which will be easy for us to find because we can just tilde into our downloads. Uh, so we'll open a terminal and what we're going to do is find the folder that they had asked us to put these files into. Um, now I know that it's down in root and it's a part of tools on my system. So I'm just gonna CD to forward slash tools. Um, then I'm just gonna dig my way down in here. Uh, CD Xilinx, CD Vivado. Twenty 2018.3. And then from here it's data. And I think it's boards. Then board files. And there we are. So this is where all that stuff is. Um, I made a mistake earlier. And so I'm just going to erase this file with the RM. And it's no longer in there. So what we want to do is take the files from that directory, from our downloads directory, and just copy them into here. Uh, so what I want to do is take every single file that is a part of that is inside of this guy, which we'll use the star to do, and put it into that folder. So we'll copy everything from home downloads forward slash BDF dash master. So everything inside of that folder, that's why we use the star. And then we're gonna copy that to the current directory with just a dot. Now what we need to do uh, again with this is to put sudo down here. So that's going to take all those files and copy them into this directory. And it didn't do it because I didn't use the recursive command. So we use a dash R and it may have, there we go. And there we go. All of the files are in here, uh, even the readme file, and that's perfectly fine. Um, so what we can do from here, we'll exit out and we should be able to just open up Vivado, and uh, it should be able to open a board file now, which will be super useful for us in the future. So we can have a lot of useful stuff for the constraints and for automatically pulling pins and stuff like that. All right, so then we're going to go to create project. 
And for this project, what I want to do is just, uh, we'll just call this test project. And but next, we want it to be an RTL project. Um, we don't need to add any files yet. We don't need to add any constraint files yet. And we're going to go to our boards and we'll find that board. The Ultra 96, I have the V2. And we're going to use that. We'll hit next. And then, of course, we didn't put any constraints or source files, and that's fine. Then we'll hit finish. And we'll wait for that to initialize the project. And I will bring you guys back when it's done. So now that uh, Vivado is opened up and uh, we've got our project ready to load, the first thing we want to do is create a block design. So we'll go over here and click on Create Block Design. We could just leave the default name. We'll click OK, and this will start creating our block design. From here, it'll pop up a diagram window um, for our block design. And of course, it's really small here. Kind of resize this stuff. And we're going to add a uh, add IP to the block design, which is going to be our ultra scale in POC. So what we can do here is just type Zinc. And there you go, Zinc ultra scale plus MPSOC. And that'll bring that into here. And we'll get the, you know, the address editor window, which I don't work with much. But it also has this link here to run block automation. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, make sure both of these are selected. Click OK. And then from here, we need to connect our clock pins for the zinc. And there's a script to do that in the in the file here. But I mean, it's, it's really just clicking on this one, connect it to that one. Uh, click on this and connect it to the clock. Uh, and there we go. I mean, simple as that. Now we can validate our design. So we just click on this check mark here to make sure that it's valid. It says that it's successful and there are no errors. And now we'll go ahead and save the design. And then we're going to go into our sources tab here. And we're going to find our design one board design or board diagram file, the diagram file, BD. And we'll right click on that. And we'll go down to create HDL wrapper. Uh, we're going to let Vivado manage this wrapper and auto update it. And we'll click OK, and it's going to build our wrapper, which we can see just popped up here. So we can click on that, and we'll see that all of our stuff is inside of that wrapper there. And then from here, um, just if we're just working with this guy, we can just click on Generate Bitstream. And then for this box here, we'll click Yes. And we're going to use however many cores we can spare. I'm doing a video here uh, recording OBS, so I don't want to go too hardcore on it. And just in case it cuts out my video, what I'll do is... Um, I'll click OK and then I'll bring you guys back after as soon as it's done doing that. So let me go ahead and click OK. So it may look like it goes away, but up in the top right hand corner here, you can see that it's still running. Um, so you're going to wait till that's done running and it'll pop up a new window uh, to show you what's next. So I'll bring you all back in a bit. All right, now that we're done generating the bitstream, uh, this little window here pops open. Uh, and what we want to do is just open the implemented design. So we'll hit OK. So now we've made the bit files. We need to export those to SDK. So what we're going to do is go over to File, Export, and we're going to export the hardware. And we're going to include, make sure you include the bitstream, and we'll leave it local to the project because that's where we save the files. And then you'll know it's done when it's up here and it says Write Bitstream Complete. And that's pretty quick. So now what we'll do is open this up in SDK. So we'll launch the SDK. And we're going to pull in the local project stuff. And while that's loading, I'll cut and bring you back. I have a feeling it's going to take a long time to load. All right. So now that that's loaded, I'm just going to maximize this and take care of the whole screen here. And uh, what we'll do is minimize this guy. This is our design wrapper. So that's got our bit file and all that stuff. So what we want is a new uh, application file. So we'll go new application project. And it'll bring up this... Um, application project wizard here and I'm just going to call this my HW project for hello world um, these defaults are fine we want to make sure that that's the wrapper uh, everything else looks good let's click next don't click finish we're going to include the hello world file and then we'll click finish so what that's going to do is create a hello world file which will use our design wrapper from here what we can do is go find this hello world the BSP is the board support files and uh, we'll look at our sources and there's our hello world program and this is set up already to do the hello world stuff so what I'm going to do now is try to build this 
and make sure that it builds okay. Now it says that there's two errors, so let's check those out. So I'm going to have to look this one up and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, so it appears that I don't have make. Um, that'll throw an error. Um, so we're going to install these packages here on our Ubuntu system. Um, pretty simple, just copy that command there and I'll put that down below. And we'll use sudo for it. And I'll bring you back here as soon as that's done installing. And then we're going to use this command here, build essential. And I'll bring you back when that's done. Apparently that's going to take forever. Okay, so now that that's installed, there is a third program that this guy talks about in this post. I'll install this last one here. So we'll do that. And I'll bring you guys back when that's done. So it actually seemed as though that worked. Um, what I did uh, after doing those installs is just go through and delete these. So I messed up the audio on this part and I had to voice over it. Uh, so excuse the kind of lag time and change in here. But what I'd forgotten to do when I did the Vivado install was to uh, install the drivers for the board. Um, so what I'm doing is going through and going into the CLI in the directory where the driver install file is. Um, and I've got that pasted in the link down below. And uh, basically just running the install file that's in there, um, which I'll also paste the, the name of down below. We're going to run that through, and then that'll allow us later on to actually connect to the Ultra 96 board. Also, make sure that you run that command as sudo. I'm just going to call myself sudo for ghetto from now on. So now that we've got that installed, what we're going to do is unplug and plug back in the Ultra 96 and then restart Vivado. Uh, and then we'll see if we can get it up and running from there. So let's open SDK, launch it, and you'll bring in everything from uh, the local project. We'll go forward from there. We'll let SDK load. Now while SDK is loading, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the uh, Ultra 96. Make sure the switches are over uh, to the left as shown in the picture. And then plug in the power supply. So I'm going to go do that real quick. Now that we've got the power supply plugged in, we'll hit the power button, which is actually button four, I think. And uh, you should get four LED lights showing up between the two USB ports. Um, one thing I'd like to note while I'm getting moving on this is that the Ultra 96 gets really, really hot. And I know that they have an onboard fan, um, but this project doesn't work with that. So we're going to get this project completed really quickly and uh, we'll get it unplugged soon thereafter. Uh, so traditionally, I'm used to just being able to go through and doing file, um, new application project and having it load all that stuff for us. But there's a, a stipulation here that's going to keep our USB serial from working properly if we don't do this with a board support package first. So you're going to go to new board support package. Then you can leave this name standalone BSP0. Um, we'll use the design wrapper hardware platform. All this stuff uh, is where it works fine. Uh, then we'll do standalone and click on finish. Now that's going to bring up the next screen, which is our board support package settings. You want to go into standalone and go to your standard in and make that PSU UART 1 and your standard out and make that PSU UART 1 as well. Now from there, that's actually what's going to let us communicate with the, U the UART as well as program the FPGA. We'll hit OK. Now we've got that, that standard BSP built. Um, we'll make sure through our console that it's fully built. All right, so now that that's fully built, we can go in and we're going to do another project or another new, and we're going to go to application project. And this is where we're going to do our Hello World program. So this is just kind of the standard startup program for this sort of thing uh, to get the board rolling. We're going to make sure that our Design One hardware platform is used, um, standalone, and we're going to go to use existing for the board support package. And we're going to use the board support package that we just created. Then make sure at this point that you click next so that you can select the Hello World program. Then we'll click finish from there. And SDK will go through and build that for you at that moment. So now you can go through and if you want, you can look at the Hello World program. Uh, we can go into source and open the Hello World program. Literally all it does is say Hello World. So from here, what you really want to do, you go to your SDK terminal. Uh, we're going to click on the plus button. Um, we're going to choose the USB that we have, which ours is USB 1. I'll show you the D message for that real quick. Let me scoot this out, stretch this out. 
Um, that was a D message that I'd already printed. Um, and it goes, just shows me USB zero. Uh, now, if I, if I back up here for a second, cancel that. If you go through and program the Xilinx the first time before you go to try to connect, it tends to minimize your options and allow you just to have that one that works. So what I'm gonna do is go through and, and click on, um, let me reshow you that. I'm gonna click on Xilinx, program FPGA, and I'm gonna leave these as standard, looks all right to me, uh, and click on program. We're gonna let that program the FPGA and it will be able to do so because we set our switches um, fully left or as the picture it showed. Um, then we can go to SDK terminal. Now we can connect to the USB serial and uh, the baud rate 115200 is right. Uh, eight data bits, one stop bit, no parity and no flow control uh, with no timeout should be fine. We'll click on OK um, and that should connect to that USB. Now all we have to do is go up to hardware. Make sure you click on this. Um, when you go into the run menu, if you're not seeing anything, let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let's click on Design Wrapper. If I go to uh, the Run menu and I click on Debug As or Run As, there's nothing there. You have to make sure you click on what you're trying to run. Uh, then we'll go to Run As. I'm used to be using the hardware GDB, uh, but it doesn't seem to work for this board yet. I'm not sure why. It may be a communication thing. Um, so I'm going to go to Run As, Launch on Hardware System Debugger. We'll click on that. We'll let it run through. And it'll take a little bit. If you look down here in the bottom, it's still at 99%. hasn't hit a full. Now we've got our console popped up. If we go back and look at the SDK terminal, we'll see that our Hello World was printed. Um, so we've successfully loaded a processor and programmed that processor onto the Vivado project, um, built binaries and built the project for it, uh, and we've printed back to the USB. That's the start of this whole thing. Uh, it's very minimal, but it's good to understand all these steps because as we move forward, we're going to use a lot of these steps to do stuff like blinking LEDs and, and even more intricate and detailed things. So if you like this video and you want to see more with blinky LEDs and stuff like that uh, and, and how this moves forward with the Ultra 96 and with some other boards, um, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified uh, and continue with us. Have a great day and don't forget to love well.